gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Two Fat Guys Talking Flowers, where we're always going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly about flowers. I'm Fern, here with Ryan. We got Mike in the house, Joel on the soundboards, our esteemed, awesome, amazing, one-of-a-kind, unique, superb, badass guests are none other than Brittany, Eddie, Lauren, and Rafi from Petal Productions. Good here for the... All right. I'm going to... We, we got Carlos oh, sneaking in. We in got a special guest. Carlos is snuck in. That's so funny. He was there the whole time. I didn't even see him. <laughs> he was in the no weeds. Worries, Ryan. We didn't see him either. Camouflaged. Love it. Yep. Easy to hide in the jungle. So you guys just came back from Ecuador. You had a trip. Um, I know we'd love to hear. I, I got to see a lot of pictures. Mike was out doing something touristy, and you guys got him to do that. So that's, I mean, that's amazing. He doesn't do that with anybody. But guys, Pedal Productions. Wait, before we jump into the story, um, Brittany, Eddie, Lauren, tell everybody what you do over at Pedal. Introduce yourselves. I'll start. Um, I've been with Pedal for going on seven years now, and I am in sales and design. So I meet with all of our brides, all of our clients, and kind of design the event or the wedding from start to finish, including specific flower recipes. So I am choosing the specific variety of flower and its quantity to design a centerpiece from start to finish. Brittany, how long uh, how long have you been uh, in the industry? How'd you get started? Oh my god, I'm I'm older than I look, is what I hear. But um, so I moved you're to older Miami than twenty two. <laughs> okay, I moved to Miami you. in two thousand four, graduated college in two thousand eight, and have been doing it ever since. So you, there's nothing. UM or FIU? Are you ready? Yeah, Johnson and Wales. <laughs> Hold you on. Heard of that? so were you were you study what were you studying it's a hospitality school they say you go there if you have a johnson or you are a whale hmm. so i try I like not it. to advertise my alma mater so much um it's now bankrupt and defunct um, i was about to say i don't I think i think you beat them they're no longer around i got all the experience i needed on the streets of miami there you go. Love that. I guess no shout out to Johnson and Wales today. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's our sponsor. And now a word <laughs> from our sponsors. <laughs> what were they called? Whalers? What were the Johnson and Wales students called? The Johnsons and the Whales. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they. Got, that's why they that's shut why down. That's why they shut it's down. So they got name. canceled. FAU Literally. was yeah, an exactly. owl, wasn't it? Yeah. FAU owls. Yeah. Where Ryan went. They listen. It was a. It's a very small school. We had to wear uniforms on campus. Like um, the chef uniforms, people, right? Yeah, a lot of people went there, and then they graduated and went into like the cruise industry. So Miami was a great place for them to be. And a lot of other students went and got law degrees after to be sports agents. So there was a concentration on sports and entertainment event management. Um, so a lot of my like um, people that I went to school with are now working for the Marlins and the Heat oh, and awesome. the Panthers in that kind of corporate world of, of the sports teams. And I just chose to do weddings. <laughs> <laughs> now we got another hookup. There yeah. you go. Now we know. <laughs> Let them know yeah, we're exactly. into all the sports. We're into yeah. all Wait, of them. Brittany, did you choose to do weddings or did I choose you to do weddings? Exactly. That's the good question. I um just, once I had to sign up for the flag folding class and couldn't pass, I had to get out and go straight social. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Lauren, how about you? Hi. How are you guys? Fantastic. Um, I do the same thing as Brittany. So it is pretty fun here. Um, I've been with Pedal for almost three years and it's been a blast. So yeah, newer Miami resident for sure. And and was Pedal your, your first job in the industry? No, I've been in the industry for 10 years, a um, little over 10 years. 
and I got my start in New York City. So much um, better yeah. weather down here, right? Do you miss New York City? I, no, not at all. <laughs> Everyone asks me that all the time. They're like, do you miss New York? I'm like, the only thing I miss about New York is being able to pop into a bodega and grab a sandwich from the deli at any hour of the day. Mm. A bacon, egg, and cheese or a chopped sure. cheese? What are we talking about here? We don't have chopped Neither. cheese. <laughs> but if I had to choose one, I'd probably choose a chopped cheese. Yeah. Mike, you, you have did you ever have yeah. a chopped cheese in New York? We don't have that. That's a newer thing. That's a newer thing, right? That's what I thought. We don't have that. We have York, yeah, three much- basic things, which are pizza, bagels, and bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches. And then you can go ethnic if you want. Bacon and then, sandwiches. you know, ch- chicken cutlet sandwiches and Italian sandwiches. With, you can find uh, you can find the best of everything in New York. But it's you, very Bubba, the, the, Bubba ver- like the very best <laughs> bagels, Steam, pizza, porch. <laughs> I flew down to see your grandmother. Yeah. I flew down to see your grandmother when she was in, like, that hospital where you recover at. Mm-hmm. And I got off the plane. I took a cab to the place, and I got a cab. And the very first thing I looked for was a deli, mm-hmm. so I can get a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich for me and for your grandmother. Her apartment has one in the downstairs yeah. of her apartment so you can just walk down the ele- take the elevator they didn't down have that when i lived there 40 50 years ago mm. anyway oh, right. that's cool so there's lauren so lauren, lauren eddie lauren uh lauren yes have you found we a better bagel intro. you haven't found a better bagel what did you say did i find a better bagel here in miami yeah no chance. No but chance. the closest thing is El Bagel. El Bagel. I've heard about that. The oh, closest I'm thing is El Bagel. And dying I to try go back that. To New York. It's very good. I, I go back to New York pretty often, and every time I bring back bagels for the squad, uh, and it's a really fun Monday ritual for sure. We we get down in the in the Tompkins Square bagels. Shout out to the best one. Everyone on the plane can smell those bagels. Worth it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone in the plane can smell they're it. They're all looking for me and they're all jealous. Yeah. Why you took bagels with Ecuador? No, I say every time I go back to New York and I come here, I always bring bagels back no. for you guys. That's Carlos, by the way. Say la- hi, Carlos. He's sneaking Hello. in from all angles. <laughs> it's it's a podcast, not a video podcast, so standing there waving isn't gonna help. Oh. <laughs> 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 It's a make believe you're in a casino. Oh, man. oh no. They need your hands, not your voice. Right. So here we need your voice, not your hands. <laughs> I just want to say I wasn't on the trip, but it looked very, very nice. You know, and I was very jealous that Ryan just made me work when he took me and that this looked like <laughs> a very <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He really came. He went with me for the Ecuador yeah. show, so it was you, all work. You definitely got the short end of the stick, for but sure. you're the only one that got to get naked in the in the beds of flowers. This so, is, I mean, true. Yeah, this is right. kind of a, I, you know, tit for tat. No, 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 no. I have pictures of Mike being, oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't spill the beans. Oh, my. Uh, but, yes, it looked really great, and I was very jealous the whole time. Me, too. I know the feeling. I think it's the first of many, Carlos. I really enjoyed it myself. A lot of fun. You didn't get to go this time, Ryan, right? No, that was Mike. No, unfortunately. Got COVID right before the trip. Ryan and Casey both went down right before the trip. Terrible. I know. know. It's good. We didn't have room for them on the bus anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we needed to keep the luggage in the bus. It would have slowed you down. Yeah. (laughs) Too funny. He's not wrong. No. We really, and then Eddie. We would have loved to have him, but we brought Eddie for the good times. There you go. Yes, Eddie. What's up, Eddie? Hey guys, how are you? Doing good, doing good. Tell us, how long have you been at Pedal? What do you do? How'd you get into the industry? Well, I got into the industry just to make a little extra money. I started helping out with processing flowers and moving arrangements. That was like eight years ago, but and I've been with Pedal for the last five years and I am charge of the all the floral production. I take care of all the flowers when they arrive, make sure that it's the best quality. 
and for the designers when they're making all the arrangements to make sure that they look exactly how our clients want it. So just to give you an idea out there uh, who's listening on how big Eddie's job can be uh, and the team pedals job can be on a weekend. Yeah, maybe somebody Carlos, Car- Carlos and Eddie and, and and the and the back the back side of things have a huge. What what is the average amount of events that you do on a weekend, Eddie? Well, we can do around just the weekend between fifteen and twenty events. Dang. Just talking events. about the weekend. So if fifteen we're talking and about twenty like, events. God. You heard that right. That was not any kind of static on the line. There's a 15 to 20 events. That job, what these guys do, is huge. And Just they, huge. I and, say, and they pull it off amazingly every time. Yeah, 15 and 20 events where if there, if it's a wedding, that one out of 15 brides has been planning this shit for two years. And yeah. this is the most important day of her life. And almost the if it's a big investment for the parents or whoever's paying for it. So it's really interesting to see where for us, it's one of 20, but for them, it's one in a million. Yeah. So they really value the well scale said. of importance shoots up um, like crazy. It's incredible. One in Do a you million. think some parents believe the more they invest into the wedding, the more likely the bride and groom are to stay married <laughs> it might it might be the opposite <laughs> not if you use my wedding as an example no <laughs> so some fathers rafi might think hey if i put all my money at this she won't come back to my house yeah right because there's no more money left yeah <laughs> right? exactly. she's officially spent it, all. spent it all <laughs> that's funny and rafi why don't you talk about yeah, you how you started me? and what you do there? Yeah, just listen back to the episode that I was on like um, eight months ago. It's got all my history on it. That's true. <laughs> and we that was episode, that. what, 22? And I don't remember the episode number. Um, yeah, I started in this industry because I was drinking too much. No, um, but I did I did start <laughs> when I, I was at a bar and I met a guy who was a floral importer. And I said, I would like to have flowers in my house every weekend. And he goes, sure, you have to buy a box, 250 at a time. So I went out and every Friday I'd go there and I bought 250 at a time. Um, so I kept 50. I gave 50 to my parents. The other 50, the other 100, um, the other 150 I or sold and gave to neighbors. And then somebody said, hey, can you do a little arrangement? I did. And their kid got engaged. And. They asked me to do the wedding, and that's how I started. Funny, fun fact, when I was in Ecuador with Rafi, we were talking. His dad used to go to 28th Street every Friday and buy flowers. Who he bought from, we're trying to figure out. But <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. That That's awesome. A million years ago, he yeah. was in 28th Street every weekend, and now... <laughs> The reality was the reason I wanted flowers is because I grew up in a house that always had flowers. And that was because my father used to go every single Friday morning into the floral district on the 28th Street on the west side, and he bought flowers home. And that's what gave me my love for flowers, just seeing it every week. And it appears that most likely my father ended up buying flowers from Mike's family. And the truth is, I started working with Mike's dad when I started in the industry. So it's not such a big jump to feel like, yeah, we're still in there together. I think it's so cool that that. I think that's it's awesome. very possible that he his dad was buying from my uncle or my dad. Oh yeah, his episode was nineteen. If you guys want to listen back, his and uh, Carlos's episode. <laughs> yeah, I was close. I said twenty two. Um, yeah, so that's my kind of history, but the reality is my history isn't as important as the current history of the team that we have here, which is much more important than I am. They are the, the full users of Jet Fresh. They get to really 
enjoy the incredible company that Jetfresh built, which makes you know our industry super difficult. There are so many elements and so many things that we have to put up with. I know we did, we had seven or eight events yesterday and because of the wind and the rain and the, the forecast said it was gonna rain in the morning, but the rest of the day is gonna be beautiful and clients chose to go outside and then it ended up raining the whole day. So there's so many elements that we have to deal with that we don't have control over. But the beauty of working with a company like Jet Fresh is that side of the business, we don't worry as much about. Um, we don't worry about if we're going to place the order and not get something that we asked for or get something that is a different color than we asked for. So um, they have made this part of the industry incredible for us. And they made it really for Lauren and Brittany and Eddie because they're the salespeople. They're the ones that are working with the flowers every day. And being able to go and see what it takes to getting these flowers to us hopefully gave them uh, an insight as to what it takes and the amount of work and the amount of hands that everybody that everybody puts up with. So, um, yeah, it was really incredible. That's a good point. Did you guys have a mental shift after seeing all that? A hundred percent. hundred percent. I left and was like, okay, what Jeff, what Jet Fresh breeds can I put into my clothes that I don't currently have? And like, what what active switches can I make to make sure that we're fulfilling from your farm first and then supplementing from others? It was the it was like the immediate first thing I thought of the second I got home. And also just to see the impact that you guys have on your community is so impressive. Like it it was really eye opening and also really inspiring to see how much you you really care. Um, and I think that it really trickles down to the end to the end user. So we met at the airport on Sunday, mm-hmm. and I look at the tickets and I, and I said, "Man, they somehow the airline they we were all sitting together at some point, and somehow they kind of like messed that up a little bit." Um. And then we got down to Ecuador. We passed through customs in seconds. And we went to the hotel. We had to wait for... Me and Eddie checked the bags. We had to wait for the bags. But we got uh, out Juanita um, and Emilia were at the airport waiting for us. Nice. You didn't get the, Which was the hotel cool. pickup. You got the actual. No, we got the hotel bus, but I thought it was cool they were there yeah. waiting for us. And then we went to hotel, checked in, and then we went to uh, Pim's, the restaurant for dinner. Pim's is uh, that's the one that's on right. top of the mountain with the uh, with the big mm-hmm. statue of the uh, the angel of the angel. Yeah. Yeah, and because I guess it was Christmas, um, it's kind of season, Christmas, New Year season, they had other angels and other lights and seemed to have been really crowded and a lot of people, a lot of traffic around. It was great, great energy. And that restaurant is, by the way, why did you skip over the hotel? You know, we had no idea what to expect going to Ecuador, and you're like, "Are we going to be in a little, <laughs> a little shed?" That we have to... <laughs> and this hotel is gorgeous, really beautiful, with full service, a swimming pool, and a spa, and restaurants, and bars, and two espresso showers. And each... they had espresso martinis, hmm. <laughs> right? They know you could have stayed home for that. So we, we used to we used to stay at the Wyndham. When we stopped staying in the city, we used to stay in the city all the time. And it took forever to get in the city, forever to get out of the city, to go to the farms. So we decided, you know, if we need to go to the city, we'll go to the city special and we'll just stay by the airport because it's more central in order to go to north or south. So we used to stay in the Wyndham. And then one day the Wyndham was full and I went to the EB. And I said, oh, E.B., you know, I like this before I even get in the door because my dad's initials were E.B., so I love that. And uh, there was a instant connection. So when I got to that, the first time I stayed there, I think Joel had the same problem when he stayed there, is I couldn't figure out how to work the fucking lights because uh, <laughs> you put 
You put. You, I couldn't figure it out either. Fine. Yeah, you're ready for bed. You want to get in the bed and you hit the switch that's next to the bed, but that doesn't turn off the right light. You have to get out of bed. And, so the, the the way to have the rooms wired up kind of sucks, but the shower for me makes up for it all. Mm -hmm. I love that shower. 100%. I love a shower that's hot instantaneously. You don't have to wait. So, yeah, EB is where it's at. Then we went that to. That hotel the, is awesome. But we didn't stay there the whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, no. Well, but, we got a whole another story about the next hotel, don't we? Yeah, but that restaurant you took us to that night, Pims, has the most incredible view of Quito. Yeah. Overlooks the entire city. And fortunately, we got there when it was still daylight. So you kind of get that daytime effect. Mm -hmm. But we spent a few hours there. And by the time the sun went down, the city was aglow and it was gorgeous. Really beautiful city, kind of gold glow. It was great. It was such a beautiful scene to see. So, and then the, um, the guys drove us through a keto. So after dinner, we had kind of a driving tour through keto and that was beautiful. Cute little city. To the old city. Looked clean. Looked safe. Did you see all the churches and everything? I mean, there's so mm -hmm. many churches and like colonial mm -hmm. style old churches. It's it's beautiful there. Yeah. So I feel like such an amateur because Mike sends out this email to us warning about altitude difference. Mm -hmm. Even suggests you know, remedies. And I'm like, Ugh, I got an iron <laughs> stomach. I'm not a wuss. I'll be fine. Lauren's like, oh no, Brittany, like you, you might feel something. I'm like, nah, not me. After dinner, I walked up three flights of stairs <laughs> and was like, it was two flights, Brittany. It was two flights. It felt like three. Two flights. It was two flights. There were it so like three. large <laughs> steps. And I had I started walking a couple of paces and I was like so out of breath <laughs> and all of a sudden like my fingers started tingling and I was like, I'm going to walk over here and like get some privacy and like catch my breath and not embarrass myself. And Lauren said she looked over and I just put my hands on my knees and just kind of like fell back into like sitting cross-legged just on the street. She's like, are you okay? Did you pass out? And I was like, no, I'm just resting. <laughs> It hit me so hard. It took like eight minutes of breathing exercises and eight Tic Tacs to like come back to life. But afterwards, I, know, but I was fine. Wow. What kind of Tic Tacs? Yeah, I'm curious. Cheated. Were they no, the orange ones? Cheated. He showed us the orange box and we thought it was orange Tic Tacs. It turned out yeah, to be Yeah, it's an absolute ripoff. I finally... <laughs> We're in a gas station. <laughs> Not this trip, but the trip I was two weeks before. I was at a gas station, and there they were. Orange Tic Tacs. And I'm like, I'm buying three of those. So I bought three orange Tic Tacs, and I opened the first one up. I'm so excited. And it's white. So they use like an orange case. Uh. <laughs> but their white Tic Tacs flavored as orange. So it's kind of like... Deceiving. Yeah. Bootleg. Yeah, Bootleg tic -tacs. I was just orange Tic Tacs market. are just candy. They're not actually. Yeah, mints. but they're not yeah, like they're available candy. here. You know, you don't find orange Tic Tacs around here. Uh, By the way, go the next time you want orange Tic Tacs, you let me know. I'll spray paint them any color you want. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I also got the fruity flavor mix uh, box. Brittany, that altitude sickness is serious. It. I was scared because I was like, if I get sick and like, I will be so embarrassed. Juanita is over the goat over here. Yeah. She was in four inch high heels, took them off. And is like, man, just walking through the streets. I'm over here. Like can't go up two flights of stairs. I'm like, I cannot be the wet blanket <laughs> fight through it, fight through it. Um, but it was, it was scary at first, but I'm glad it hit me for there rather than in, you know, the jungle in these cascades where I would have really been put out. Um, but, but yeah, now you, just but now you know exciting. what it feels like. And next time you go, you, 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 you won't be, I think half of that altitude sickness is just being nervous that you feel weird. Right. Right. You know, That's a it's good not, point. it's not so much that 
Because you don't know what you're feeling. You don't you're know. Like, yeah, you this? never yeah. experienced that yeah. feeling before. So once you feel it and then you know what it is and you kind of get through it, then for next time, it's not a big deal. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did it's you, like when you take an edible for the first time. Right. And you, you don't know what to expect. Like. And you're like, is this what everyone is this feels? Ever <laughs> yeah. Just smile. Yeah. Just get in the corner and smile. Did you have issues walking the farms? Or are you? No. Good? All right. Good. No, it's the first night. You get over that. Yeah. That hump. The Sometimes I get a little dry blood in your nose. Do you ever get that? I get dry mouth. I get just dry mouth and dry eye. Dry eyes. Yeah. Um, but the first, like I was telling them, the first night that I ever went to Ecuador, I was laying in bed in the hotel room, and I was my heart was pounding, and I felt like I was really sweaty and hot, and I thought I was having a heart attack. But then I realized I said, no, this is just the altitude, and then. The next day, I didn't feel it no more. Shit. So, yeah, so I recommend that, you know, you take a baby aspirin and some vitamin E and stuff like a week before you go. And usually that thins out your blood just enough you don't feel anything. hmm Yeah. So then the next morning, we got up, we met for breakfast, and then uh, the van picked us up with the guys. Juanita, Majo, Amelia. Do you guys have a favorite out of that crew? I love all of them. They're great. Oh, they say. did an amazing job. I know. It's messed it's up. It's like asking you to pick your favorite child. You don't do that. I could do that. There's always a favorite <laughs> child. Well, I don't know how many of them listened. I don't think they all listened, so maybe they won't know. They'll listen to this one for sure. They couldn't be here. We tried to get them to be here, too. You guys are so good and political. I love it. So we got onto the van, and we went north out to Rosa Prima. Rosa Prima. Yep. How's that? I haven't even been there. I'm jealous. Pretty fancy. That's a big farm. It's huge, huge farm. It's incredible. It's a flower factory is what it is. Mm. It's not even like it's a flower factory that produces the highest possible quality. And those combinations usually don't work out, but somehow they figured it out how to be massive and still produce a quality product. What brand would you say their factory is like on par with and like an American brand? Like, like what? I don't know. Like, think of like what I don't know. Like Ford, like a factory. Oh, they're. Uh, in my opinion, I would say they're up there with the Audis of the world. Yeah, I would say they're up there with the Audis of the world. To be able to produce that many flowers, how many flowers they say they harvest every day, Rafi? I forget. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Flowers a day, two point five million a week. Oh, yeah, fuck um, out of here. Yeah, so, wow. But you know what's interesting? We we hear petal productions. That's our goal: is to do more than anybody and keep it at top quality. Yeah. So when we started doing one party every three weeks, you know that was not our goal. Our goal was to kind of grow and do volume, but keep the quality up. Um, so being there and watching somebody be able to be known as the best and still keep, you know, that growth and that large volume is is inspiring and impressive. Yep. So we were greeted by the boss, Juan Martin, and his dog was named what? Yambo. 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 Which is probably Jambo pronounced Yambo in Spanish. <laughs> What's Jumbo? I don't know. But that dog was cool. It was uh, a, a mix of something, <laughs> and it loves to play with plastic bottles. Anyway, we were met with by him, his dog, and uh, their head of marketing, which uh, is a big fan of yours, Ryan. And uh, 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 one of the sales guys' name was Daniel. And uh, they showed Pedal Team and me and Juanita pretty much Everything that we needed to see, we walk walk through their uh, testing area, and for me that's yeah, pretty cool no, because they test a lot of different no varieties. Secret recipe. There's no secret recipe here. It's not like they have some kind of something behind the curtain or a magic potion they put into the water that they're hiding. It's none of that. It's love. It's care. It's persistence. You can see it. Yeah. Every bed was perfect. Um, They've really mastered to make sure that very little is left to chance.
but it's not a secret formula. They grow 37 hectares of freedoms. 37. Wow. Just freedom. Yeah. Our whole farm is 10. Right. They're sold out of freedom. <laughs> right. They're sold out of freedom. I mean, Holy I mean, shit. And they're sold out. <laughs> so it, How many hectares of freedom do you grow, Mike? Uh, well, zero. Zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> zero. What I really liked, because we didn't really know what to expect. Like I have seen pictures of Rose Farms that, you know, I didn't really know the scale or the operation. Um, but what really surprised me was right off the bat when they offered us not just like a coffee to walk around with, but they had a chef with a buffet set up, a long table with ranunculus centerpieces, charger plates, full table settings, and we're literally preparing a large breakfast. So just there, it showed that it's like a people first culture where it's like, we break bread first, and then we'll show you what we have to offer um, and not the other way around. And we sat there for like 45 minutes, like eating and getting to know one another from that farm before even walking anywhere or any pamphlet sales pitch. Let me show you my operation. It was sit and get to know each other first, which really became like how every every place that we went was like that. Yeah. It was a very, very relationship first, which I thought was really nice. And the extra carbs and coffee didn't hurt either. That helps with that uh, altitude sickness, I promise. Did did you, <laughs> did you take them to a, a shitty farm at any point so they can get a good comparison of how good these farms are? Uh, no. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of messed up to go right to Rosa Prima as no, your first farm. That would farm be the next trip. And see the standard, you know what I mean, <laughs> set that high. No, I, I felt like pre-Valentine would be an amazing time to go visit Rosa Prima. And I, I really wanted to make sure, and so did Juanita and the guys, wanted to make sure that their experience was something that they're going to no, for sure. get a good lesson from yeah. and, and, and take back and... And share it with other people and, and amongst themselves to have that experience. Because I always think that that's for people that are in the flower industry for a long time and don't really get a chance to travel, or go to see farms, or have the you know have the have the the, the hall pass to go mm -hmm. into some of the cooler places. Uh, um, I always think that's a plus. I, I had never been to Rosa Prima myself. Neither had Juanita, and uh, you know just going through their testing room and then listening to all the things they do and then watching the the harvest coming in to the post harvest by conveyor like it has like a ski lift kind of a thing where every all of the 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 nets are coming from the fields above your head into the post harvest and in the post harvest it's kind of like where a ski lift lets you off where you know, they let you off on the intermediate or the beginner or the expert. Like they, 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 they kind of like turned. Sure. And then they had all these people that were taking them off as fast as they were coming in, and they were separating them into the water uh, buckets as to where they're supposed to go. And it was happening really fast pace. And then like I'm, I'm going in there. My jaw is on the floor. I just like whoa. I can you know the first time you see something like that, it's like wow, that's massive it's kind of like remember when i went to holland and i told you i was at this giant lily farm there's only like five people working there mm -hmm. like that really was jaw-dropping amazing but this operation um is the most organized and fast-paced post-harvest operation that i have seen in my life that that is really cool. Whatever they figured all that out as they grew. That's like a wet dream for you. No, no, <laughs> I, I, I'm not. They have a lot of employees. no. That's, that's I, I wouldn't be people. able to sleep too well at night knowing that I had all that going on. Uh but it still was impressive. The people that worked in the post harvest were friendly, as though they were busy. So everybody was working and they're working. But they took a minute to say good morning and, you know, I took a few pictures with people, just random pictures. And uh, walking through, you see how efficient they are and you understand how they can export such high quality with so many varieties and so many things going on. 
So, I mean, you guys could chime in there on that. I mean, that was, for me, wow. Mm -hmm. And you know what else is unique there, which we hadn't seen before, is they're, we know they specialize in the roses, but they've now taken up two more types of flowers that we would consider and we would buy, which is the um, ranunculas and the anemones. And that's kind of a new product. We didn't see them grow it, but if they can turn that into what they did with the roses, which is highest quality um, and, all, and all of that, that would really be something incredible. So super happy to be able to see that. I like to call like when I when I went to my first trip uh to to visit a farm in South America with Mike um <clears throat> I call that moment like flower life altering right because it's one of those things that changes your perception on where your flowers come from you know how the work and the care and the time and the energy that is spent to grow those flowers um and get them to you it really to me, it really changed. I've had, I had it twice when I went to Ecuador for the first time. And then when I went to Holland with Mike, those two were the biggest flower life altering uh, moments because, you know, it puts everything in a different perspective. You want to hear something crazy? Friday, I believe, or Thursday, the girls sent a whole bunch of orders that we needed for specifically uh, some Tavola brand by Rosa Prima uh, roses. And uh, all what we saw, it sold out. They were too late. Sent those orders too late. So uh, that's a big lesson. Like got the guys like that, serious like that, who are always producing quality that customers know they can count on, they send their orders there because they don't mm -hmm. get fucked over. They send their orders there. They're, they're guaranteed to get their flowers. And that's... Uh, you know, that's a lesson for us, too. But I would never think a cut farm like that size could ever be sold out. But apparently they are. Pretty cool. Yeah. My um, biggest takeaway besides Juan Martin and his dog starring in a Netflix novella about <laughs> Valentine's Day um, is that when I saw all the freedoms, it kind of clicked that this past weekend that I had a big event in Miami with very, very heavy counts of red roses, all different varieties. And I said, is there a possibility that these are indeed my freedoms that will be shipped to Miami and used at a quinceanera on Saturday? And we kind of backtracked the math and we're like, sure, shit. Yes. Yes, it could be. And the lady that was cutting just hands me these clippers, by the way, the best clippers I've ever seen. And I have, you know, a video of me cutting one of the stems. And like Mike said, going in the wrap, going on the conveyor belt, being packed, um, and then being put into the cooler. And on Saturday morning, there's this, you know, crazy mom. She's freaking out about, you know, the performer for the quinceanera, rollers in her hair, and I come and I sit with her in her hotel room and I shared with her all the photos from our trip, including the photo of me cutting, it being on the conveyor belt, it being brought into post-harvest, being wrapped, a picture of Eddie actually making the centerpieces. And then I was able to hold her hand and walk her into the ballroom with all the roses and all the candles lit. And it was really cool. It was a really nice full circle moment. Wow, that's great. That is awesome. It was sick. It, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. And I'll have a forever client now. When that, if the, she's going crazy on a quinceanera, when this girl gets married, can you imagine? Mm. She'll be she'll be with us in Ecuador checking on her flowers before before they're harvested for her own wedding. So I have a forever client now because of that content that came out of that trip. That's great. Yeah, it was cool. So after we uh, we finished up at Rosa Prima, we got on the van and we went right down the street to uh, another farm that Rosa Prima owns that has the Hills Connect the Floor uh, showroom, Mr. Dean Rule. Mr. Dean Rule came to the farm to make sure we followed him 
to his place and then gave us a really great education on the breeding process. Mm. I don't know if Eddie or Rafi or Lauren wants to talk about that, but it was super cool. Breeding of roses is pretty incredible. Just considering that they, according to um, Dean, he breeds 70,000 varieties a year. Now, only five or six of them actually end up getting mass produced. But just the number of how many tries they take to get to something that is beautiful and perfect. It's I mean, I don't know what that number comes out of out of 70,000, only five. But um, it was pretty cool. And I know some of our team got an opportunity to breed some roses. So pretty cool. Meaning they got to paint the pollen with the crosses. They, they were able to do it, which was pretty cool. I'm it's incredible how long it takes just to produce a new variety. It can take up to four or five years just to produce one and then decided you're going to mass produce it. It's a long time. I got to tell you, and I want to, if Dean, if you're listening, I, I got to thank you again for all the time you took with us and uh, showed us everything that's going on. And we had an amazing food at his place too. His wife's a baker. So what was that? The cinnamon buns that she made and these giant oh. croissants. Everything was good. We ate good over there. Like yeah, it, but you know what? What remind what I remember most from that lunch was the Cathy Rose sitting on the table. Mm. Mm-hmm. There you it's go. It's the size of the dinner plate. Kathy is uh is gonna be coming at Jeff Fresh Growers. We already have oh, it in the yeah. ground. It's I uh, remember it's, Kathy. Right. it's the biggest hot pink rose available. Bigger than Pink Floyd. Huge. Three times. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. Because Pink, pink Floyd was no, was it, always a monster. It, it no. Dwarfs it. Huh? It is huge. No, these are seven centimeters before they're open. Yeah. And then it like opens to like the size of my face. It's yeah. wild. Yeah, but he's got he showed us all of his new spray roses, especially. Um they have so many new spray roses that a lot of farms have are planting them. So they're having a big couple years. And all those spray roses will be really plentiful on the market in the next year. You'll see them all. And it's all like his wife and him thought of these names. They start like with B. So be true, be fair, be nice. Yeah. Be, yeah I don't know. They're all just all these B names. And uh, I like the line. It's pretty so, cool. So Petal's obviously a leader in the, the wedding and event industry. So they see a lot of the trends pretty early on, probably earlier than most event industries, I would say, uh, event companies. Do you guys feel like you saw what you saw from the farms was like up with the trends or do you feel like there was things you saw that maybe it was already kind of over the, those trends might be over or do you think anything like that or i the time spent with dean and a lot of the the time at rosa prima i felt it was the era of the spray rose or the spray rose is popping off there and you know we'll feel it this upcoming season some of the spray rose varieties stopped me in my tracks. And that's and I was taking pictures. If I look through my camera reel of all the pictures I took, the majority were spray roses. Um, so I feel a like lot of them are, are varieties that are are roses that have laterals. You can't even call them oh. a normal spray rose, what we know a spray rose is. A lot yeah. of them are larger headed. They were sprays on crack. Yeah. <laughs> sprays on crack. Steroids. I love them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that and that's Dean's. Yeah, steroids, not crack. Lord. But that's what Dean is <laughs> going after. Whack. Dean is going after crack a spray rose that has like a you know a seven or an eight cent or ten centimeter lateral that you can actually break off and get more yield per stem, or they're big clusters on the top mm-hmm. that right. take up a lot of real that's, estate. That's the takeaway. That was a takeaway for us, which is spray roses used to be kind of at all different levels. So um, if you wanted something that was free form, it was great. But if you wanted something more tailored, those spray roses had too much movement. But now they're just kind of one cluster at the top. 
So instead of using one rose, a regular rose or a hydrangea, this group of spray roses kind of replaces the hydrangeas or, and it gives you the same amount of coverage. That's right. And he's, he's breeding varieties that are long. Like that, most spray roses are 40, 50, maybe 60. These are all like 50, 60, maybe 70, maybe even 80. Like some of them grow really long. So that was pretty cool. And then from there, where do we go from there? From Dean Rule's place. Did you guys get some bizcocho? Um, yes. We of have course. Bizcocho. Lots of bizcochos. <laughs> um, but then I think we just went back to the hotel, right? Yeah, that's probably a long day at that point. Down all day until we were done. But where, where did we go after June? I'll tell you. Um, Lauren has to check her notes. I check my pictures. We have a whole shared album. This is the only way I ever know how to where I was and what I do is because of my camera roll. By the way, uh, Ryan, I have a I, copy of the shared album. I nice. can't remember what I did yesterday. That. Didn't we go to oh, the lake? Oh, no, we went to the center of Earth. We went oh, to the center of oh, the Earth. Oh, yes. We right. went to the Del Mundo. Mm, zero latitude, one zero longitude. Did you yeah, see the stop, water? a lot of them. Did you see where the water Where we turning? were was the center of the Earth. Yeah. I have zero, 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 zero on my phone. Zero, zero, zero north. Um, and that was pretty cool. But then we went into that little uh, market. Playa. No, we no, something. No, we first went to the market to buy stuff. Didn't we? We, oh, went, we went straight to the supplier, which is fine. Okay. We went to a market? Didn't we go to a place to buy like little tchotchkes? You bought, like, I bought a blanket. I thought that was after. No, no, that was no, that was before dinner. That was before dinner, yeah. Yeah, so we went to this market where they sell all handmade, local, local uh, alpaca stuff and all hand knitted and carved things. What did you get, Brittany? Um, I got a solo wooden cooking spoon. Meanwhile, Eddie and Lauren over here having a fashion show with socks and sweaters and hats. I'm like, I need this spoon. <laughs> and I love it. Go. Lauren got a nice hat. Eddie got some nice sweaters. <laughs> yes. I got... Uh, I love them. I got some clothes for my grandchildren. Nice uh, clothes for my grandchildren. Rafi got a blanket, I believe. Right? Got a blanket and a spoon. Like an, al- an alpaca Me? blanket or... Yep. Yep, an alpaca blanket, um, just so that we knew Lauren would be cold on the way home, so she could keep herself warm. Um, <laughs> they did me a huge favor. Yeah, we understood what was coming. Um, yeah, but it was, you know, it's just cool to see. And um, we walked around the town, and I know Lauren and Heather got to run into a pharmacy. For some reason, my wife likes going to check out pharmacies in foreign countries, so. We did that, and that was pretty cool. Um, it was really Could nice, be she's you know? in the pharmacy business. Yeah. You know what, though? It's interesting. I think that was the day that – was that the day that the, the news got taken over by the, by the insurgents? We heard about it the next day. Yeah. But um, everything seemed quiet, you know? We didn't feel anything in, in that respect. But um, mm. cute little towns – Really beautiful on the water, but I, I think the highlight of that evening was dinner, where we went to dinner at this really beautiful place. I don't know, um, Eddie, do you remember the name? Yes, Puerto Largo. It was amazing. Yeah, it was incredible. It's a big lake with a mountain across the side from the lake, and the the restaurant yeah. made you feel like you were sitting on the lake. From the windows I that think we saw, like underneath it, actually. Yeah, it was Very really cool. nice, and they ha- it's like a hotel too. They have like all these cabins there, really nice, rustic looking cabins. Everybody stopped and took pictures there. What'd you have? Mike? Rafi was uh, went out. We found that there was a herd of sheep across the street from the restaurant. <laughs> Rafi went out to try to say hi to one of them, but every time he made one step forward, the sheep took one step too. So it's pretty funny. (laughs) (laughs) 
There was this one they little black no sheep that I liked. They were cute. I liked those little sheep and their parents. And they had a yeah, it was just very pretty. Some swings that go over the water that everybody went on. It's just beautiful, beautiful yeah. place. Very relaxed. Great weather. It was a cool evening. That was really nice. Yeah, it was nice. Yes, and then and then Juanita dropped the bomb that we'd be staying in a haunted hacienda. No, so that night we went back to the hotel. <laughs> to... No, but she told told us while we were there. That's when we got the news. Well, we'll get. I guess we'll get to the haunted hacienda in a few minutes. But then, then we just took the the bus back to the hotel. A um, couple of hour ride, not too bad. Roads are pretty cool, very um, winding and back and forth. Um, I, don't, I went right to sleep. I got back to the hotel, did a little bit of work for a bit, and went right to sleep. So, kind of for me, it ended there. I think Brittany and Lauren did some post post day drinking. We did. <laughs> we opened up our laptops and ordered a few cocktails and got down to business. Sounds about right. right. Sounds about uh, what needs what needed to be done. Yeah, the party don't stop. So, um, all right, but yeah, that was a really beautiful day. And had that been all, we would have been fine. We would have said, "Boy, that was a successful trip." But amazingly enough, it got better. So let's talk about the next day. Next day, we did the same thing. We met for breakfast. We uh, we bumped into Amy from Esprit in the restaurant. We bumped into another lady that I know at the restaurant. And then we got in the van after breakfast and uh, headed to Jet Fresh Growers. You guys had not, at this point, you still had not heard the news of what was going on in, in Guayaquil. No, not yet. No, we didn't know back then. Not yet. Juanita knew, but she didn't want to tell us <laughs> Smart. until I mean, we yeah. found out by ourselves. I mean, if you needed to know, Carlos would have been like, no, nah, they got to know. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, Carlos feels like the responsible adult that you could look to to make sure that you're making a good decision. So yeah. that was definitely appreciative. <laughs> yeah, so we, um, took a, we took a ride. We, we, our first stop was uh, the first and only stop of the day was Jeff Fresh Growers. Nice. And uh, the team prepared us a really nice breakfast uh, in front of the casita. Carlos has this new tent that he bought and installed it. It's pretty cool. It's not like a traditional tent. It's more like a, I don't know how you would explain canopy. it. A canopy. Yeah, it's, that's it's like exactly. like a stretch, like a stretch spandex top. But yeah. It was, yeah, it was. So the but side you know, posts stay there all the it. time. The middle one, he takes it off and on. It's oh, pretty nice. cool. Yeah, Mercedes was you waiting know, for you, us. You drive, you drive through the countryside, and you see lots of farms, and you see, you know, broken down homes, and you see potted and driving over big potholes on the road, and so you have no idea what to expect. A lot of the country looks for or the have-nots and. You're like, all right, so we're going to go to a farm. You don't know what to expect. You pull up to this gate, and they and it swings open, and you feel like you are in somebody's well-kept, well-maintained home that they built with every single rock, every single plant was hand-picked, hand-placed with love and care and Although Rosa Prima is impressive with the quality and the size, it's a business. You get through the gate and it's a home. And it's although there might be a hundred or whatever the amount of employees that are there, hundreds of employees, every one of them is part of a family. And that's what you feel as you get through the gate. What I liked and a nod to Ryan is like, you know, we're like driving through these dirt road and all of a sudden I look up and I see the iconic Jet Fresh font <laughs> on a wood carved sign literally this big with just a directional sign and that was still I would say like a mile away from the the front gate so like that branding was there 
miles before we reached the the gate which was really cool like we all squealed like <laughs> um, so that was a really cool moment and i like too i'll never get over the sheer enjoyment of rafi's wife heather when she saw the fresh juice shots on the table what they had done is taken a whole fruit so you could see what it looks like you know, directly from the stem and then around it, put like one ounce shot glasses as like a fresh fruit tasting. I mean, she, it was like Christmas morning to her. I think she slammed like three shots from every fruit and was like, oh, this is so good. Blah, blah, blah. Like it was, the it was really re- nice. The fruit's really good. Though, so, yeah. so excited. Makes sense. I would like to move into the casita full time. I told Rafi, I was like, I'm really sorry. I just don't think I'm going to come back. Okay. It's <laughs> okay. It was so <laughs> lovely. If, if you, it really feels like home. Like when you're there, it really just feels so comfortable and it's such a warm and inviting atmosphere. Um, I tried cactus for the first time, which I really enjoyed. Right. Did I, what was that? Was that cactus? Um, yeah, it's um, cactus pears, side rice. I loved it. And blackberry juice is my new go-to. Mm-hmm. That's so, by yeah, far just... my favorite. Mora. Mora. Yeah. Oh, so good. I think what, and, you know, we kind of talked about this, like, on our drives. As people who plan and, you know, are always taking responsibility for everything on a daily basis, it was so nice to be treated and not know what our next move was, but it always blew our expectations out of the water every single place that we went. So it was just such a great, it was such a great trip. And Jeff Rush is the shit. So that's that. On that. I, when I would look at Lauren and we would be like, so where are we going next? And we would just kept saying to each other, unclear, but it's going to be good. <laughs> like, what, what, what are we doing for lunch? Do you know when, where, what? unclear but it'll like but it's a good unclear because then you just pull up and you're like oh shit this is way better than i would have expected <laughs> I, I had no idea no idea we went down to to post harvest and you know we showed up show the guys around the post harvest and the coolers and the packing yeah and- Rafi packed packed a thing of rosie he did a great job yeah Rafi, free spirits Rafi right? packed a free spirit that's great yeah, and I'm waiting to take them home. And just waiting for them. They'll be here this week. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably here, right? I was going to say, yeah. You they yeah, probably just it. got here today. Then uh, we went and walked around the greenhouses for a while, looked at some varieties. We took a ride in the Combi in our VW uh, 70s bus. Mm-hmm. And uh, walked through the farm a little bit. Then we went to the nursery. So they could see how we test in our little tiny nursery. <laughs> and then uh, what did we do next? We had lunch then again, right? We saw yeah. the laundry room. We went we to heard the... heard about your social program. I know, I know this is a oh. video. It's a podcast. But look, I have it on my desk. Hmm. Was that Heart of Cold? Heart of Cold. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So those are sitting on my desk. Hard for people to see it on a podcast, but love them. Beautiful. We are we are um, growing specifically Heart of Gold for Pella Productions. They're not just, for sale. Just They're for them. Just for them. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. One thing so. that I found um, surprising and really really fantastic was the amount of women that were, you know, in key positions um, at Jet Fresh Growers. They all felt really, really proud to speak about kind of like their department and what they handle. And Juanita and the girls were explaining to us that that's, you know, that's done on purpose. That's done with intention to really give women their independence and to make them feel, you know, powerful and and educated and independent and proud of their of their specific segment of the farm um and then all the social programs that you guys have really spearheaded um from the laundry services offered on site to um you know sexual health and well and wellness 
for these women was really, really incredible. And it's something that that stuck with at least Lauren and Heather and I, and, you know, throughout the day, we kept revisiting it and talking about it, which was really special. Yeah, we had a great day at Jeff West Gross. You know, it was nice. Uh, uh, we we were showing the new uh, the new uh, locker room shower building, and then we walked around to the laboratory and the doctor's office, and then we went to the laundry. And Melissa uh, kind of explained everything that we do, and just listening to Melissa say it all, mm-hmm. like she's like, I'm like, wow, man, she's like, she's not missing anything. She really loves what we're doing there and Juanita was also explaining about the domestic violence that uh, as classes that she gets for the female staff and mm-hmm. birth control and a million other things the 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 spay program that they have annually yeah. that Maho runs with Anahi and they uh I just no no. We went to the art department. The guys saw how roses were absorption dyed and airbrushed. Brittany had all these new ideas for some new customer client that she's working with. Nice. Yeah, just all. I think it really it really was educational, but also from the outside looking in, it seemed to me like your creative juices were flowing. Oh yeah. As we were going from different place to different place. And then from the farm, we retired. It's time for go to the next hotel, which is a movie in itself. <laughs> Mike, did you stay there too at the haunted of course, hotel? Of course, but I didn't oh, stay haunted, in room number nine. Haunted hotel. <laughs> this is one of the craziest fucking things that ever happened to me. I think, honestly. What happened? I went one of. The- you gotta, you gotta tell you gotta, the whole story. Yeah, yeah story. we need to hear. Right, no, I didn't hear about this. Including the trip advisor and all that. You gotta tell the whole story, please. People, so at, people, at, be prepared to laugh. Hard. At lunch, I'm asking Juanita about the hotel, and she mentions that it's for you know, because like before she told us that it's haunted, so we knew. Said, we had known already. Was marinating for like 24 hours like we knew but we didn't really know we hadn't done any research. every time we've ever like, stayed but... there we've joked about it looks haunted just driving in there it looks like a movie haunted movie but i've never oh, googled yeah. it like Brittany did so that's <laughs> yeah it's a huge mistake yeah, it's a huge mistake <laughs> so the first interaction was the feeling when we went down the driveway. There's these the- old eucalyptus trees. It's like Sleepy Hollow met Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. I know where you guys went. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I went there. I've been there. I've it's been 1, there 000, we, we told Amelia, you need to film the ho- the Halloween movie next year here because yeah, yeah. it is for sure haunted. For yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. And it was gloomy and there were rain puddles mm-hmm. at the front at the front step. I'm looking at the driver, Vinny, who looks like a hard ass. Like, hey, Vinny, Vinny, what's, you know, you cool with this kind of thing? And we go in and right in the lobby, which is the, you know, the living room of, of this home, it was kind of hustle and bustle. Everyone had their their suitcases and their bags and Mike was checking us all in. And I'm kind of towards the back and there's this little bellman there. This dude looked 14 years old and he was wearing like almost like an old timey bellman's outfit where like a button was buttoned all the way up. And I was kind of messing with my kind of like, you know, elbowed him. And I said, Hey, you feel some, how long you've been working here? I heard, you know, <laughs> there's some, some phantasmas here. And he says to me in perfect English, I've only worked here two weeks. And I'm like, two weeks. He's like, yeah, everything crazy happens in the back and kind of points across the courtyard. And I'm like, oh, okay, uh, you know. Did he greet you? Good evening. (laughs) Yeah, so we get our room key. Mike No, I think what... And everyone starts walking towards the back. The room keys are made of steel. Physical keys. keys. Like keys. Yeah, not like cards. And the key chain is like a big piece of steel. With the yeah. number engraved in it. Yeah, and he looks at us and he goes, No, you guys are right here. 
meaning Lauren and I are isolated <laughs> in a remote corner of the hotel no, me, where everyone please. else is together in La La Land. <laughs> And so we get to the room. There are three beds in the room. And right outside the door are, there's photos all over the home of like old timey photos of people that have lived there. I shit you not, that 15 year old Feldman <laughs> face was on the wall dated 1913. Spitting image of the guy. Never saw that Bellman again the rest of our stay. He wasn't at dinner. Yeah, he didn't never saw him either. Dinner. That's strange. Yeah, you've got a good point. I never he went saw back that into the anymore. photo. He went back in. That was the foreshadowing morning. The Bellman. <laughs> so, Lord, okay, when we were on three beds yeah. and a fireplace and lots of windows, Lord opens up the window, graveyard. So, <laughs> so listen, when we looked in, when we looked outside, I noticed that we had what I can't even call a backyard, but it was completely blocked in by like full on like 10 foot, like tall cement walls. Not a single person had visual access to that backyard, quote unquote, except for Brittany and I. And I look at her and go, this is a fucking cemetery. I'm like, we are, <laughs> we're done. Like, this is it. They wanted us here, separated from everyone else. We are isolated. We are in, in a, it is, this is not something. And there were mirrors everywhere. There were mirrors everywhere. I'm like, I need, I need to go. So Lauren's like, let's not stay here. Let's go get some fresh air and explore. And by explore, oh, this is we meant let's find the bar and a cocktail. So we start walking around and we find a, a gift. A gift a shop church. and a oh, church. Brittany was church. It was a church first. The church first. first. Full chapel. Full golf, like chapel, the whole nine yards, what you would have pictured in a movie, abandoned, just like empty, empty church, doors open. And then there was an indigenous gift shop on property. And I like we peel back the curtains, walk into the gift shop. There's one lady there that greets us. The We're gift looking shop, around. The gift shop was like the size of a closet. Like it was extremely, extremely small, and it smelled like incense. It was a spooky she, gift shop. She was like four foot nothing, like <laughs> traditional garb, and <laughs> Brittany and I are standing like we're basically body to body because this thing is so small and at the same time we turned to our left and there was like a little like alcove off of the thing with nothing inside of it except a singular candle burning on the floor. on the floor like mm. on the floor and we're like oh my god did you guys not did you guys not buy magic, anything black magic voodoo blah 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 and she looks at us all startled that we had seen what was in that room because she obviously was performing a seance of some kind. And she looks at Brittany and goes, are you here with a lot of people? And Brittany's like, yes, we are. And she's like, really? How many? And Brittany told her five. I'm like, why are you telling her who's here? You're going to like tell her the room numbers. Like you're giving, you're giving away our social security numbers at this point. Like, Please, like, let's just redact that information. I'm like, Brittany, we need to go. So we ended up running out. I was so spooked. And we ended up in a field that was completely open, no grass, no cement, just dirt, massive, massive field. And in the middle, and it was a very gray day, just like set this, just to set the scene, in the middle of this massive field was a life sized cross just there. And I'm like, we're in another cemetery. Like we, this is it. Like, <laughs> I, we need to go. And then so we, we found, yeah, we found our way back. We found our way back to the bar, the most important spot. We get a bottle of wine and we curl up with the girls in front of the a fireplace. Cat. And a cat that wouldn't leave us alone. We picked up the cat in the church. Mm -hmm. And after that, the cat didn't leave us alone. I'm convinced that that cat was the bell man. Yeah, that, that's oh. possible. Because it was at dinner, too. What? The cat came to dinner also. Cat would the not cat stayed next to me at dinner. That That is the young Bellman boy. <laughs> so we yeah. get we go to dinner. At this point, we know something's up with this, with this space. I mean, it's out of a movie. 
and yeah, like, that's that's dinner. I follow you when you walk. Now, down Eddie, the hall. were you worried about the, the the hotel being haunted at all? No, not at all. Okay. But I know that there was something weird going on. <laughs> you know, I was freaking. You can out. feel it. You could feel it. Yeah. You so I, we all sit down for dinner, and this is when all of the stuff starts happening on the the on why the, I care. the political side. So everyone's kind of like googling on their phones the CNN articles, or you know, you know, talking about the current situation. I could care less about CNN. I'm going right to ghoststories.com and running this place through a search. And sure as shit, there's articles abound of how haunted it is. And I don't like to read the haunted stories because they're all fabricated for PR. I want to hear it right from the horse's mouth. So I go to TripAdvisor. Do you still have, have do you still you. have it? You could read it? I have it. I have it. I'll read it to you right now. Dude. Because this is what people So we're at are dinner, saying. guys. So just understand, we're at dinner. It was really cold, probably because it was haunted. So mm-hmm. with, with the guy comes in and he sets the fire on. The guy turns the fire on. And after like 20 minutes, the fire burns out. So Rafi goes and he puts some more wood on the fire and he's using the thing that blows the sparks to make it flame. And it doesn't light. And I'm going to say to myself, there's something ain't right here. There's no way that those coals are not going to light that wood. No yeah, way. It was so- so finally the guy comes back and the guy has some kind of igniting stuff that he puts on the wood yeah but, diesel yeah diesel. I, yeah but okay, me and Rafi both try to get that fire to go and we couldn't do it so that's spooky in itself because yeah i'm a city boy yeah me too let's hear are the you review guys ready? Yes. are you guys ready i'm ready i have it okay this is the review that someone writes there's it's a long blah 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 we'll get straight to the point what, is there a name and date yes july 2014 okay uh and this is el, about your el room torres, specifically el torres 93 it says it, she says a bunch of things and says they even have a little church on grounds room nine is supposed to be haunted but no sightings were seen that day lol they even say Simone Bolivar had stayed here. Please press like if this review was helpful. And the property responds. No, at this L- point, wait, right, at this point, I look down at my room key and realize <laughs> we are indeed in room now. <laughs> so then the property responds. The property responds. So at dinner and, and says, Lauren said, wait, 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 wait. I'm not fucking staying in that room. There's no I'm way not I'm fucking staying stay in that room. <laughs> Wait, I want to hear what the property responded. So the property responds and goes, August 3rd, 2014. Dear guest, thank you for the review. We are conscious that there are some things in our hotel that still have to be done and we are working very hard on it and our aspiration is to have it concluded soon. We are sorry you didn't get one of the rooms you would have preferred. Room nine is supposed to be haunted indeed, exclamation mark. Many people through the years have experienced paranormal activities, not only there, but on the entire Hacienda grounds. There's no, they're not denying that it's haunted. They're like, yeah, we know it's haunted. Yeah, that's good for, that's good marketing. I ran ran straight to the front desk and was like, you need to change my room right now. I am not staying with the ghosts. You even admitted that there <laughs> are ghosts in this room. And she looks at me dead face and goes, I'm not changing your room. Yeah. Oh, shit. And I'm like, what do you mean? And then she start? said, you should not believe everything you read. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, you should not believe everything you yeah. read online. I'm like, <laughs> you shouldn't write those things. So I thought I'd be able to convince her. I went to say, hey, you know. I need we to have, have a room changed. And she's like, no, I'm sorry. No, the sorry. The hotel is full. Mm. No, no. no it was, the hotel wasn't full. I'm like, is the hotel full? She said, no. I just oh, won't change she told me room. it was full. It was filled with ghosts. Yeah, they wanted us to stay yeah. in room nine. And all I can, like, I, I was freaking out. And also Juanita told us a story about how there, and I don't know if this was in room nine specifically, but Juanita told us a story about how this guy checked into the hacienda and walked into his room and saw a woman there sitting in his room brushing her hair. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I guess they gave me the wrong key. So he went back to the front desk 
and was like, hey, um, someone's in my room. You guys must have given me the wrong key. And they're like, no, actually, you're the only occupant of this entire property. So yeah. he fully like. Because I heard that he when I went to my room, I refused to look in the mirror. I would not look in the <laughs> I mirror. Also, Mirrors I are, are supposed I to be portals. For yeah. ghosts. Yeah, yes. I wouldn't look until the next morning. Their door Where sunlight. you guys messed up is you have to buy something from the indigenous lady. Right. If yeah. You, that it, might, that's like well, paying homage. So, if you yeah. buy from her, you're safe. She'll you keep the spirits you won't away. have any issues. No, but this one. Did you get any I sleep? That's a good question, Eddie. I was worried that if I bought something, that it would like bring them in, you know? But. Yeah, Brittany and I, I forced her to, I was freaking out. Everyone was laughing. I, and I was not because I grew up watching things like Paranormal Activity and Ghost Hunters. Like, this shit is real. Like, I fully believe in, in the spirits. So, and I was so upset that I didn't bring a sage stick or any Palo Santo. So I'm like, you know what? We're just gonna, we're just gonna embrace this. I, just like Mike, refused to look in the mirror. I put a sleep mask on my eyes. So if I woke up in the middle of the night, I wouldn't see anything except the inside of my sleep mask. And I forced Brittany to stay in the bed with me. There are three beds, two people. We slept in one bed with the lights on. And lights the lights on. on. Lights on. Well, that's, that's rule number one. They can't get you if the lights are on. But Everybody it was that. one bed for you, one bed for Brittany, one bed for the bellman. Oh, I had yeah. an extra bed in yeah. my room too. Yeah. I don't know. What yep. That, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you know but um, Brittany is really good at that okay. stuff. Brittany was like every few minutes coming up with a different. Different what? She was different, driving me crazy. Different article <laughs> or a different thing. Oh, here's talking. another one. Yeah. yeah. Two yeah. two young women she murdered in room nine. Murdered. The best you guys, is when the lady in the front desk that. says, you shouldn't believe everything you read in like really solid good right. english she said it. it was pretty funny did you guys yeah. see the so, mass murder survived. that happened there did you guys see the article with the mass murder that had happened there no. yeah lauren <laughs> no just that, kidding that property is like from the 1800s it's built in this big giant no 1700 built with like these big pieces of stone like a castle is built the floors all creak. They're all wooden floors. Everywhere you step, it creaks. Even the waiters are spooky. Yeah. No, but even the like the lighting, like the lighting isn't bright. It's like perfectly dim. Like if Hollywood had yeah. set the lighting or set the mood for a haunted house, yeah, that's the place. The time that we went there was just me, Carlos, and Juanita. I mean, uh, and uh, Amelia, and it was nighttime, and we went just to the restaurant, and yeah. there was nobody else there. Yeah, it was completely dark and empty and quiet. But driving down that driveway at nighttime, yeah. no, it's, is... it was it was creepier. I think it's more creepy with less people there. Yeah, yeah. If people, if there was more people there, I would have been felt better. Yeah, I went there to sleep. Yeah. I, I slept there two. This was the third there time I no slept one. there, but it's probably like the fourth or fifth time that I ate there, and uh, I don't like that place. I don't want to go there. <laughs> So, do you guys think it's creepy? Okay. Do you guys think I anything left with you? I thought it was a great experience for you guys. Do you guys After dinner, we went to the parlor with um the cat. Kept got a fire going in the parlor. Again, couldn't really keep the fires on. And the cat stayed with us until we were ready to turn in and we were just kind of curled up on the sofa, like listening to all the sounds and everything. And then by the, you know, second bottle of wine, we started playing, you know, this soundtrack from Saltburn and dance <laughs> around. And I felt like I needed to be like in a fur coat. Like nice. I, I was super into it. It was one of the highlights of the trip for me, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Love it. But yeah. we Did didn't shower. We didn't no, shower. No. We we kept the bathroom door open. When this girl brings out the lights on and then brings out an eye mask, I'm like, really? Oh, uh, you have an eye mask? That'll be my eye mask. And you can sleep with the lights funny. on. But was, we all survived. We got up the next morning. We had breakfast. And uh, no souls were claimed. Uh, Vinny also stayed there, the driver. He stayed over, and then uh, it was off to Agragana. I could tell something changed in his temperament after he stayed there for a night. <laughs> <laughs> was... Yeah, then we made a, 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 a trip to Agragana. Mm -hmm. um, on the way there, we passed one of the prisons, 
and you could see all the military presence that was surrounding the uh, prison because of all the rioting that's going on in all the prisons in Ecuador. They were there to control things in case it got out of control, I guess. And that, that when I saw that, because I passed that prison, I don't know, a hundred times. And when I usually notice stuff on the side of the road, it's usually, oh, shit, there's another big expansion, another big greenhouse range going up. And sure as shit, we saw a couple more new giant greenhouse ranges going up. But when we passed that prison, I was like, oh, that's for real. Because I've passed that prison a million times. I've never seen anybody outside there. So that was a little bit, gotta be, I was like, oh, this might not be great. So we were talking about at dinner if they were going to go back early or if they were going to reserve a new plane. And then Rafi called American Airlines and they said, yeah, we have one seat left. Like everyone wanted to leave. There was no planes to get on anyway. Um, so we were debating. we were debating whether we we're going to go back to the city early or we were going to do this. But uh, the team rallied up and we said we're going to go do this. And we went to Agrigana. Uh You guys uh, got to see... Uh, with a farm that has, you know, 175 varieties of roses and garden roses and spray roses, as well as one of the largest growers of ranunculus and anemones in South America, if not the largest grower of ranunculus and anemones in South America. They got to see all that cool stuff. Diego took us to everything. He showed us also their bouquet factory, which mm -hmm. got me a little excited because the the equipment that they have to process uh, masses amounts of bouquets is pretty all brand new and state of the art. They have a machine that makes spun bouquets. I was gonna say they got the robot. They got the robot bouquet thing. They not It's not a robot thing, but it, it's it's. I've seen those lines a few times. Um, but if I, I I was saying to them like if I would have had that when I was in the bouquet business thirty years ago, um. I might still be in the bouquet business. That's pretty cool stuff, the way they make that happen. They f they specialize in uh, not supermarkets. They sell to all of the dot-com guys. So they do custom recipe work for all the dot-com guys. You know, like... Uh, yeah. What was that? Uh, uh, what was the name of that one that you like? Uh, Urban Stamps. Urban Stamps and, and those Oops. kind of guys. Bouquets in a box. And then from Agrigana, we got good education there. Where do we go? Banos. Went to Banos. That's my first time ever being there. That's pretty far. It was like a two hour ride from further south. Not, not bathrooms, right? For non Spanish speaking people? No. Dude, <laughs> no. Not, not I bathrooms. always thought, like, what a weird name for a place. Bathrooms. Go in there, <laughs> it's all about the water. So mm -hmm. it's the waterfalls. It's a cool mm -hmm. area. Ruben took me there on a trip. Uh, he took me to Ambato where he has his small family farm. And then from there, he took us to Banos. Well, on the way to Banos, we went to Salcedo, which is the ice cream capital of nice Ecuador. Uh, it's like 50, 50 ice cream stores, one after the other. We got some ice. Rafi had some ice cream over there. It's pretty good. Yeah. And then I uh, went to Banos. No. Didn't no. we go first? Mm -hmm. We went to eat first at oh. the top of the mountain. But that was, that was in the same areas. We went to the top of this mountain, really high up, to a restaurant. Had like a resort and spa called The Moon or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. That drive is not for the week. Yeah. Especially, so especially with a I, stick like, shift. Even yes, even with my seatbelt on, I caught flight. <laughs> Literally, I was bouncing around back there. So we had a great lunch actually <laughs> up there in that restaurant. Yeah, it was lovely. It was super lovely. Yeah. yeah. Then we picked up a tour guide. Who really? Oh, didn't, he really didn't guide us too much. He's the one that told us to get out, and oh. we're like, we <laughs> <laughs> you better get out of here soon. We're like, hey, so what do you think of like everything that's going on? He's like, get out. We're like, oh, really? We feel, <laughs> we feel pretty chill here, but okay. That's fine. He was trying to go home early. It's like, no he, more he questions. Was just, he was just planted there to make us feel out of shape. 
when he did the up and down and climbed out of the cascade and like wasn't even out of breath at all. He didn't break a sweat. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I was huffing and puffing coming up. When, after Ooh. we went down, coming back up, I was huffing and puffing. Me too. But I was also like saying, if this was a year ago, I wouldn't have been able to do it, any of it. No way would I have been able to nice. do it there. So... It was cool, the covered bridge and all that water coming down. We had some, we took some nice pictures. Yep. Mm -hmm. There. And then we had the long road home from there. Yeah. Back to the hotel. You guys went back, but to the hotel, not the haunted one. You guys went all the way to the airport. Airport hotel. Oh, that was a drive. Yeah, it was good. (laughs) We needed it. We needed the shower. So we got back. Everybody was pretty tired. And then, uh, Next morning, they went to the airport and went home. You guys took Brittany, us 7 a.m. want to talk about the lounge that you so loved? The lounge at the airport, <laughs> 10 out of 10. It had an outdoor moonlit. The design of the, of the patio at the airport lounge was like rivaled any Miami Beach mansion. Um. Yeah, Rafi was like, Heather, go outside. Go take pictures for our backyard. <laughs> it looks so they, cool. they also have like a place in the back where you could sleep. Like they have these, like they're not beds, but they're more like recliners that like, I always recline. They're Where's like the lounge chase, in the airport? They're like chase lounges. It's uh, yeah. across from uh, uh, Outback DJ Steakhouse. Friday. Or Fridays, whatever that is. It's, yeah. it's, it's up the I elevator. Think it used to be an Outback and now it's a Fridays. Yeah. It's called Priority Pass. That place. It's sick. American yeah. Express gets you in. A custom sandwiches, omelets. Yep. Really nice. They have I nice love- desks where you could just sit down and work. That's what I always do. I always get a coffee and sit down and work. Mm-hmm. Grind out some stuff and then go to the gate. It's a good place yeah. to catch up on your emails. I like that. That airport yeah. lounge is awesome. But you know what? Flights in and out were easy. Quick, easy, just about four hours. Going home was even less. Um, and just super easy. It's, uh, you know, going out to... What surprised me was when I actually looked at the map of the world, I didn't realize that South America, that parts that we are more West than Ecuador. We, I always thought we were more east than that but ecuador is actually more west than we are which was really surprising but then again the people in ecuador think they are the center of the earth so it doesn't matter where you are well it was really an incredible trip educational informative bonding um we got to see just Beautiful parts of the world, beautiful flowers, great people. I had an amazing time. So thank you. Thank you. I did too. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. 100%. Casey and Ryan, they missed out on some good shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there was a lot of points, especially at the Haunted Hacienda, where I was like, damn, if Casey and Ryan were here, we would have snuck out the back and then like wrote on the window hell they would have <laughs> there was a lot of moments where i was like they would have been my prankster go team yeah that's fucked up but yeah for sure i would have done it why not scratching <laughs> the window yeah exactly <laughs> Just i was already nightmares. so fragile i couldn't i couldn't handle anymore i couldn't handle anymore yep i had to behave i felt like i'm the boss <laughs> well it's good i'm glad you guys got to uh step away from the norm the every day that you know the the day-to-day grind and actually and not just enjoy and like visit the country but get your education as well and see how things are done and get a new appreciation for all the flowers yeah, that you guys use lot. We learned a lot. I think when you guys now are talking to your customers, uh, your clients, and and you're selling or advising, like you have more knowledge, experience of that part of things now. 
Absolutely. I think that's a tool that's invaluable. Absolutely. What I think is really um, what kind of hit me, especially having a really coming off a really busy weekend these past couple of days is when you're adding, you know, a couple of blooms of, of floral to a cake or, you know, the servers are asking for leftover flowers to use on their passing trays. And I used to be very, you know, nonchalant about it. Oh yeah, you guys can take whatever you want or yada, yada, but really just respecting the individuality of one bloom and what it's gone to and really taking advantage of like, you know, the inventory we have on site, like use all the flowers, you know, don't let them sit in a truck. I want to use everything. I want to celebrate each individual bloom because now I have some point of reference of the history of what it took to get it to me onto this cake right now. Yeah. Rafi was saying that uh, he explains to customers or to clients, sorry, uh, when they say that the uh, price is too high or something like that, or that rose, why is it so expensive? Rafi goes down the whole list of why that rose, how many hands touched that rose and how, yeah. how, how, how hard it was to grow that rose and get it to market. Um, those are great points. Yeah. 40 to 50 people touch that, touch that plant or stem before a client actually gets to see it in their centerpiece. And, when a client says, oh, my God, it's, you know, a dollar a row, you're like, 50 people touch this. They each have to make up any, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. That's right. All right. Well, I wanted to say thank you so much for your partnership and thank you for joining us to go on this amazing trip and uh, taught me a lot as well. And I also enjoyed some cool spots that I probably would have not ever went to because I'm always working and I don't have no time for play. Yep. But now I want to make more time for play because mm -hmm. there should be a balance and I really enjoyed it. You By the way, if you, ever, if you ever need someone just to have lunch with it, your casita, let me know. It's three hours, you know, four hours one way, four hours back. It's worth the trip. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I love that spot. I stay there every time I go to Ecuador when I can. Yeah. Well, again, thank you, thank you. Thank you, and guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. It was really, really remarkable, the trip of a lifetime. We loved it. Awesome, yeah, guys. I'm thank so you happy. so much. I know everyone was happy. Uh, Juanita and the girls, thank you guys always so much uh, for your hospitality and going out for our, t our pedal team and, you know, showing them a good time and scaring the bejesus out of them. You know, we always appreciate they the that. Goat. They definitely right. are. They really are. Team Pedal signing out. Oh, he's out out. He's he's out. out. He wasn't <laughs> kidding. <laughs> They're busy. <laughs> Shit. Thank you, Brittany. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been a badass episode, even though our guest already snuck out. Uh, Ryan, Mike, myself, Joel, Eddie, Rafi, Lauren, and Brittany. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for sharing and 